heredity and hereditary changes. You know that heredity is the transfer of biological characters from one generation to another via genes. Johann Gregor Mendel is pioneer of the modern genetics. Around the period of 1886, it took a long time for him to understand the conclusions of his research about heredity. In 1901, the reasons behind the sudden changes were understood due to the mutational theory of Hugo de Vries. Meanwhile, in 1902, Walter Sutton and Theodore Boveri observed the paired chromosomes in the cells of grasshopper. Until then, it was not known to anyone. Then what happened? Well, research started in the direction of finding the nature of genetic material when it was proved that genes are carried via chromosomes. Through which, 1944 trio of scientists Oswald Every, McLean McCarthy and Colin McLeod proved that except viruses, all living organisms have DNA as genetic material. In 1961, the French geneticists François Jacob and Jack Monad proposed a model for process of protein synthesis with the help of DNA in bacterial cells. It helped to uncover the genetic codes hidden in DNA. Thereby, the technique of recombinant DNA technology emerged, which has vast scope in the field of genetic engineering. The science of heredity is useful for diagnosis, treatment and prevention of hereditary disorders, production of hybrid varieties of animals and plants, and in industrial processes in which microbes are used. Transcription, translation and translocation. With the help of RNA, the genes present in the form of DNA participate in the functioning of cell and thereby control the structure and functioning of the body. Information about protein synthesis is stored in the DNA and synthesis of appropriate proteins as per requirement is necessary for body. These proteins are synthesized by DNA through the RNA. This is called as central dogma. mRNA is produced as per the sequence of nucleotides on DNA. Only one of the two strands of DNA is used in this process. The sequence of nucleotides in mRNA being produced is always complementary to the DNA strand used for synthesis. Besides, there is uracil in RNA instead of thymine in DNA. This process of RNA synthesis is called as transcription. Translation and translocation Each mRNA is made up of thousands of triplet codons. As per the message on mRNA, amino acids are supplied by the tRNA. For this purpose, tRNA has anticodon having complementary sequence to the codon on mRNA. This is called as translation. The amino acids brought in by tRNA are bonded together by peptide bonds with the help of rRNA. Now, during this process, the ribosome keeps on moving from one end of mRNA to other end by the distance of one triplet codon. This is called as translocation. What is it called? Translocation. Such many chains come together to form complex proteins. These proteins control various functions in the body of living organisms and their appearance too. So is it clear till here? Good. Let's move on. Theory of Evolution According to this theory, first living material, that is, protoplasm, has been formed in ocean. In due course of time, unicellular organism was formed. Gradually, changes occurred in the unicellular organisms from which larger 
and more complex organisms were formed. All those changes were slow and gradual. Duration of all these changes is almost 300 crore years. Changes and development in living organisms has been all round and multidimensional. And this led to evolution of different types of organisms. Hence, this overall process is called as evolution, which is organizational. Progressive development of plants and animals from the ancestors having different structural and functional organization is called evolution. 5. Connecting links Some plants and animals show some morphological characters by which they can be related to two different groups. Hence, they are called as connecting links. Example, in peripatus, characters like segmented body, thin cuticle and parapodia-like organs are present. Similarly, these animals show tracheal respiration an open circulatory system similar to arthropods. This indicates that peripatus is connecting link between annelida and arthropoda. Similarly, duck-built platypus lays eggs like reptiles but shows relationship with mammals too due to presence of mammary glands and hairs. Lungfish performs respiration with lungs irrespective of being a fish. What do these examples show? Well, these examples indicate that mammals are evolved from reptiles and amphibians from fishes. Darwin's Theory of Natural Selection Charles Darwin had collected innumerable specimens of plants and animals. Innumerable means countless. And depending upon the observations of those specimens, he published the theory of natural selection which preaches the survival of fittest. For this purpose, Darwin had published a book titled Origin of Species. While explaining the concept, Darwin says that all the organisms reproduce prolifically. Prolifically means fruitfully. All the organisms compete with each other in a life-threatening manner. In this competition, only those organisms sustain which show the modifications essential for winning the competition. However, besides this, natural selection also plays important role because nature selects only those organisms which are fit to live and the rest perish. Sustaining and selected organisms can perform reproduction and thereby give rise to the new species with their own specific characters. Darwin's theory of natural selection was widely accepted for long duration. However, some objections were raised against the theory. Some of the main objections are 1. Natural selection is not the only factor responsible for evolution. 2. Darwin did not mention any explanation about useful and useless modifications. 3. There is no explanation about slow changes and abrupt changes. Irrespective of all these objections, Darwin's work on evolution has been a milestone. Lamarckism Jean-Baptiste de Lamar proposed that morphological changes occurring in living organisms are responsible for evolution and the reason behind those morphological changes is activities or laziness of that organism. He called this concept as principle of use or disuse of organs. Further, he said that the neck of giraffe has become too long due to browsing on leaves of tall plants by extending their neck for several generations. Similarly, shoulders of the iron smith have become very strong due to frequent hammering movements. Wings of birds like ostrich and emu have become weak due to no use. 
legs of the birds like swan and duck have become useful for swimming due to living in water and snakes have lost their legs by modifications in their body for burrowing habit. All these examples are types of acquired characters and are transferred from one to another generation. This is called as theory of inheritance of acquired characters or Lamarckism. First record of human-like animal is with us in the form of Ramapithecus ape from East Africa. Afterwards, this ape grew up in size and became more intelligent and thus the ape of South Africa evolved about 40 lakh years ago. The morphology of these human-like animals started to appear like to be the member of the genus Homo about 20 lakh years ago and thus skilled human developed. About 15 lakh years ago, human walking with erect posture was evolved. It may have existed in China and Indonesia of Asian continent. Evolution of upright man continued in the direction of developing its brain for the period of about 1 lakh years and meanwhile it discovered fire. Brain of 50,000 year old man had been sufficiently evolved to the extent that it could be considered as member of the class-wise man Homo sapiens. Neanderthal man can be considered as the first example of wise man. The Cro-Magnon man evolved about 50,000 years ago and afterwards this evolution had been faster than the earlier. About 10,000 years ago, wise man started to practice agriculture. It started to rear the cattle herds and establish the cities. Cultural development took place. Art of writing was invented about 5,000 years ago and thus the history had been started. Modern sciences emerged about 400 years ago. An industrial society was established about 200 years ago. And now we have reached at this stage and still are searching the details of roots of human ancestry. अगर आप अपने सिलेबस के सारे चैप्टर्स इस फॉर्मेट में देखना चाहते हैं, तो हमें डिस्क्रिप्शन में दिए गए नंबर पर कॉल करें। ऐसे ही और एडुकेशनल वीडियोस देखने के लिए हमारे चैनल होम रिवाइज को सब्सक्राइब करें।